I'm Sam with 7E Wellness. I'm a licensed esthetician and a trainer, and I'm going to be using my MyoLift Mini to do a full treatment on my face and neck today. So I have that right here. It is turned on, but currently paused. First, we're going to prep our skin, and then we'll go in and we'll use our classic probes. So I'm starting with clean, dry skin, and then my first step, this is optional, is to apply the Replenish Hydrating Spritzer. I like to be very generous with this. It is your first layer of hydration. Hydrated skin is always going to receive microcurrent better. You can go in with a hydrating serum like the anti-aging peptide serum, which is also optional. So I'm just gonna throw two pumps of that on the skin. And I'll put the rest on the backs of my hands. Now, this final step, applying your treatment gel, this is mandatory. So I like to dispense it into a glass dish and I'll just apply that as I go with a brush. I have the Renew Conductivity Treatment Gel, but you can also use Restore. Um, Renew is the sensitive skin formula and Restore is our formula with anti-aging ingredients like algae. This one has lavender, geranium, and chamomile. It's a little more calming. So we're going to start out on the forehead. I like to apply the gel as I'm going, um, and I'll use even a little bit more of the replenish mist to reactivate it as I'm doing my treatment. So across the forehead and along the temples. Make sure you press run on your mini. We're gonna start on erase level one. You can check your conductivity bar, should be flashing now and should be solid once we get started. If you feel comfortable on level one, you can try to go up to level two for this first movement. If you get any prickling, if it's uncomfortable or you see the muscles twitching, then you will wanna turn your device down. And this first movement, is just a sliding and gliding motion where the probes are starting together and then they're coming apart. This is really good for any lines that form horizontally on the forehead. So I'm just doing three repetitions of each of those movements. You can do a little bit more if this is an area of concern for you. You can do up to 10 passes for each of these areas that you're doing erase on. So I just did a couple more as we walk across the forehead to cover the entire width. You can also plant the probe a little bit lower and you can smooth out this bunny line that likes to form right between the eyebrows and you can turn the probes sideways and you can pull them apart in order to work on 11 lines that are gonna come from furrowing the brows. So we're doing a lot of work here on the frontalis and the procerus. These are big flat muscles that cover the forehead and they really like to get bunched up. They tend to be overworked and so we're relaxing them with this waveform. Now we're also gonna take this to the sides of the eye. You will need to be on level one for this, uh, or at the very least, you'll need your intensity to be below 300. We've just found that over that is too strong for the eye area. So we're placing and then separating. And this is really good for treating and preventing crow's feet. You tend to squint a lot. I know I do. I don't always wear my glasses when I should, and I catch myself squinting to read things. Then we'll go to the other side. And I'm just glancing down at my device, checking my conductivity. Beautiful. So that series of movements is for the eye and the forehead. That's kind of like our natural Botox to relax those muscles without paralyzing them. Uh, that's something that you can focus on if you're really concerned with wrinkles in those areas. So now we're going to use erase and we're going to treat around the mouth. So I'll apply a little gel. 
and also below the mouth on the chin. You may be a little sensitive here, so go based on that, but you can go up to level two if it's comfortable. You wanna start with the two probes together on the upper lip and then you bring them apart. You don't need to travel too far. We're just working on the orbicularis oris. That's this circular muscle that uh, encircles the mouth. And this movement is gonna be really good for smokers lines, those little uh, vertical lines that you get on the lip line. You can also plant one probe and you can iron out if there's an area that you're specifically concerned with. So I'll do one side and then I'll plant and then I'll do the other side. This will also give you a really nice lip plumping effect. Just releasing that tension in the muscle helps the lip to be a little bit fuller. And you repeat that for the lower lip. Now you may taste metal as you're doing microcurrent around the mouth, that's normal. This is low level electricity, similar to the electricity that your brain uses to communicate with your muscles and your nerves. So when this electricity comes close to your taste buds and the nerves around the mouth, you can get that taste sensation. So now we're gonna work a little below the mouth. Some people can get very tight where the lower lip will start to fold over and touch the chin. So we're gonna plant first in the center, right below the lip. And then the second probe is going to gently pull downwards. And then we'll do one side, still underneath the mouth. And the other. Beautiful. So those are our movements that target overuse and tension in the muscles. Now we're going to switch to educate. We'll start on level one and we'll be working on the neck. If that's comfortable, you can try level two. So I'm going to take my gel and apply some down here. We're going to start just on one side. The neck is one of the spots where you might need a little extra gel. That skin is very thin and it's prone to dehydration. So in order to lift and tighten the neck, we're working on the platysma, which is this big flat muscle. It's kind of like a turtleneck and it wraps around the top of the jawline here. So we're going to be avoiding the very center where the thyroid is and then working in three rows from the front to the center and then to the back right in front of the ear. So we're gonna plant first in front. This is right below the jawbone. And then the second probe is gonna come upwards and the movement for educate looks like this. So it's a pinch and then we hold for three to five seconds. And then this will be repeated three to five times. So we'll do another. And now you don't have to be literally pinching uh, tissue here. If you don't have anything to grab onto, that's okay. You just wanna replicate this movement. So now we move to the center. And then our third step puts us out at the edge of the neck, but still in front of the ear. Microcurrent, really wonderful to work on the neck. This area tends to be a little too sensitive to do a lot of other modalities. It's a great opportunity to really target this area. So we did our pinches upwards. Now we're gonna plant our probe at the edge of the neck, still in front of the ear, but at the back. And then our second probe is going to touch near the center and then go towards that outer edge. And we pinch and hold there. So 
So this is always beneath the jawbone. We're focusing on the platysma. And there's my third pinch. Now I'm gonna take a step downwards and I'm gonna pinch lower on the neck three more times. Now, if you have the space, you have a longer neck, you can take a third step down and you can repeat this again. I have the space, so I'm gonna do a little bit. You'll see that next. Uh, if you don't, that's okay. Once you start to hit the collarbones, uh, you don't wanna be doing microcurrent on the decollete, so there's no need to treat that area. So I'll take that final step down. And this is where you might need a little spray to help your conductivity along. Much better. So I'm doing this on level one for myself on my neck. This can feel a little prickly for me and that's my cue to always turn it lower. But even despite treating this on the lowest setting, having done one side, I feel a little pulled in. So now we'll move to the other side and we'll repeat all of those movements. I'm just gonna apply a little more gel here. And I'm laying that on the skin, but I'm trying not to rub it in too much since we wanna have some play time with it. So first we're gonna do our upward pinches. We're gonna start close to the center of the face. Everybody is different. You may be somebody who does microcurrent and turns it all the way up and doesn't feel the same prickling or the same tingle that somebody else may feel. That's okay. As long as your conductivity bar is solid, uh, you're still doing the treatment. Some people naturally are just less sensitive to those sensations. Let me take our step over. And then our third step. Now with the mini, um, you can do this kind of treatment at most every other day. If you really wanna get your results, that's how I recommend you start out using the device. Once you start to accumulate your results and you're feeling more like you are just doing maintenance, then you can drop down. You can do it a little less often, maybe once or twice a week. So now I'm gonna turn my one probe and then my second probe is going to perform that sideways pinch. And again, we're in front of the ear, but we are towards the back of the neck and we're below the jawbone, just creating a really nice pinch on the platysma. And then I take a step downwards and repeat. And we take our third step downwards. Beautiful. So we pinch upwards and then we bring our pinches outwards and upwards. So it's lifting and tightening. Now we're going to move up and we're going to work on the jawline. So it's still the platysma that we're working on, but now we're tightening up that edge where it wraps around the jaw. 
So this is a great way to create definition. This area will help us to start treating jowls. If you feel like you're experiencing a little gravity underneath the chin. So you can be on level two educate here as long as it's comfortable for you. We're gonna use those same three spots. So we're on the side of the chin, in the center, and then in the back, except this time we're grabbing right on top of the jawbone and then we're bringing it up. So the probes ultimately are sitting slightly above the jawbone. You can also, if it's easier for you, place one probe right above the jaw and then lift into it or you can grab and then bring up. And then you hold three to five seconds and then you repeat three to five times. So now I've moved over and we're in the center of that side. I'm just doing three more of these pinch and lifts. And again, if this is an area of concern for you, you can do this five times and you can hold them for five seconds each, um, at which point I wouldn't do much more than that. If you're really concerned about this area, it's not about treating it at the highest setting a million times in one treatment. It's about doing a lot of treatments consistently. It's like going to the gym where you progressively come back and you work over and over and over again. That's when you're gonna build the best and deepest result in the muscles. So I've just taken my step out to the edge of the jawline now. And we'll replicate on the other side. Oh, I live in New York and it's winter here. So my skin is quite dehydrated. My skin is also quite sensitive. So you may notice I'm reapplying quite a bit. Uh, you may not have to do that nearly as much as I do. So now we'll perform our lifts on this side. And then we take a step over. And we take our third step. Okay, beautiful. So now we're going to move up and we're going to start lifting the mouth and this inner cheek area. I'm going to reapply a little bit of gel and some mist here. Bringing it onto the apples of the cheeks.
So now our first movement, we are gonna be grabbing the corner of the mouth and this helps with droopiness. This helps to lift that corner of the mouth and it helps to deal with some of that jowliness. So you can either grab and lift or you can place one probe and then go up into it as long as that ending position is lifted. And we're really holding right at the corner of the mouth. You can be on educate level two as long as it's comfortable. Beautiful, so now, our stationary probe is gonna go on top of the lip on that same side. And then our moving probe is going to start below that on the chin and then kind of make a C shape upwards. And you're gonna stop at that corner of the mouth. So you're going against the nasolabial fold that runs right here. And you're lifting that entire side of the mouth and that lower chin. Okay, beautiful. So now you just plant the probe a little bit higher, you turn it and now it's next to the nose, but not touching the nostril. And then you follow that same C shape upwards. This time you're really lifting that apple of the cheek a little more. This is one of my favorite moves. So that sequence of three movements is gonna be really good for nasolabial folds, lifting the apple of the cheek and also toning up those sides of the mouth and the chin. Beautiful, so now we're gonna repeat on this side. So first movement is treating the corner of the mouth. Then the probe goes above the lip on that side and we make a C shape. And then we turn the probe and it goes next to the nostril and we make another C lifting the cheek. As we approach the eye area, you may start to see little flashes of light. That's totally normal as we get near the optic nerve, very similar to the way that you might taste a little metal when the electricity stimulates the optic nerve, you just see those little flashes. Okay, beautiful. 
Now we can go in and we can do a little more lifting for the cheek and in the, uh, the sides or the meat of the face. So you want to be on educate level two here because this tissue is thicker, of course, as long as that's comfortable and you experience no twitching. I'm going to put a little bit of gel towards the outside of the face because we haven't put any here yet. So first we're going to plant the probe on the apple of the cheek. And then the second probe is going to come upwards and pinch. It's another great movement to lift that apple of the cheek. I like to catch the corner of the mouth on the way up just to help pick up that whole area. So you do that three to five times, and then we take a step over. So now we're in the center of the cheek. We do the same thing. Now you wanna be on or below the orbital bone. You don't need to be up close to the eye here. You're really working on that cheek. And then we take one more step for our third row. Okay, perfect. So we lifted upwards in three sections. Now we're going to lift outwards in three sections. So first we're gonna work on the zygomatic. It attaches, it's two muscles that attach right here, the major and the minor. So we're going to follow both of those. The probe first is going to sit right in front of the ear towards the top. And then your moving probe will start in the nasal labial fold and then it will go upwards to meet it. So this is also one of my favorite moves. This is gonna give you that natural facelift and it's gonna pick up that entire center of the face. So we started out in front of the ear. We're gonna go a little bit above that. So now we're sitting on the cheekbone and now we're gonna go up to meet that probe. Just gonna apply a little more gel. Okay, beautiful. So now instead of being right in front of the top of the ear, we're gonna plant just below that. We're gonna start at the corner of the mouth and then we'll go towards it. So this is working on the risorius, which is another muscle group that is really helpful for picking up the cheek and picking up that lower face.
Beautiful. So we lifted upwards and we also lifted outwards and upwards. And now we're going to repeat that on the other side. So we'll start in the center. We'll take one step over. And then we'll take our final step. Perfect. So now we'll work sideways. First, I'm going to plant the probe right in front of the top of the ear. And we're going to work on the zygomatic. And again, the moving probe starting in the nasal labial fold and then going upwards towards the stationary. Okay, perfect. So we started in front of the top of the ear. Now we go slightly above that on the cheekbone. And now instead of being right in front of the top of the ear, we're gonna go right below and we'll start at the corner of the mouth. Just moving the gel. Beautiful. So our final set of movements is going to be lifting and tightening around the eyes. You will need to be below 300 intensity. If you're unsure about that, just go to educate level one. If you experience any twitching, even below 300, you'll still need to go lower than that. So I'm going to apply the last of my gel just uh, underneath the eye, under the brow and slightly above. So our first movement is going to be to plump and brighten underneath the eye. So one probe is going to sit horizontally like this, right below the tear duct in here. It can be pretty close to the eye. And then the other probe is gonna just slide in right next to it and you hold.
So this helps to circulate stagnant fluid and blood around the eye. This also helps to stimulate the orbicularis oculi, which is the muscle that encircles each eye. Um, that will also help to plump the under eye. If you experience darkness or sallowness, this can be very helpful for that. Okay, and we'll do the other side. And I can switch which probe is stationary and which one is moving. That makes no difference as long as they're placed correctly. So now we'll focus on the eyebrows. We're going to be pinching and pushing upwards. And I'm going to start on the tail of one brow. And each time you do that, you hold for three to five seconds. Can do that up to five times. It's normal to see a little bit of flashing light, but you should not be twitching and you should not have any discomfort. You can really pick up the brow here. Then we move to the center of the brow. And then we'll treat the head of the brow. And I like to give the bottom probe a little bit of a wiggle here. It helps to release that corrugator muscle at the head of the brow. It tends to get very tight in here. And you can see immediately a little bit of that lift becomes visible. So let's go and even out my other side. I'm gonna grab the tail of the brow and lift. And then we'll grab the center of the brow. This movement is also gonna help to define hooded eyes. If you have a little bit of excess skin around the hood of the eye, then this will gradually help to pull that back up just by virtue of lifting everything around it. And then we grab the head of the brow. Now, in order to lift right in here, if there's a lot of tension, you may need to do a little extra, especially as we get to the end of our treatment. Now we're starting to check for symmetry. And now our final movement for the brows, we're gonna start with the probes apart and then they're gonna slide together and lift 
first on the tail, then the center, and then the head of the brow. Now we'll catch the center. And now we'll catch the head of the brow. And after that, you can see it's even a little bit higher. So now we'll repeat that on this side. I'm going to grab the tail first. and grab the middle of the brow. And then the head of the brow. Okay, so I'm just double checking my symmetry now. I'm gonna do one more touch on this side. This of course may be different for you. Uh, we are not perfectly symmetrical creatures, although we can strive to be. But that will conclude our treatment. After performing microcurrent, there's no downtime. There are no complications. You will want to either towel or gently cleanse off the remaining gel that's on the skin. Then you can apply any skincare or makeup products that you like. And you are all set. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, you can send us an email at 7e, excuse me, at info at 7ewellness.com. But otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day and you continue to enjoy your microcurrent treatments.